Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Way of Life. I'm your host Gus Holland and today we're going to be covering the early history of weightlifting and physical training. Before we get into that, I do want to let y'all know that merch will be dropping this week. I know I've been teasing it on and off uh, for the past month or two, um, but the artwork is finalized, the printer has been chosen, and we're going to be rolling with that. Um, any updates will be on the Instagram page, which is at Way of Life Podcast, and all links to social to the social accounts uh, and YouTube will be in the description below. Now, weightlifting for recreational purposes as well as military training can be tra- traced as far back as ancient Egypt. Ancient Egyptians would compete in many different sports and activities, um, ranging from javelin throw, tug of war, various gymnastic feats, and uh, boxing and weightlifting. For the weightlifting, one method of was to attempt to lift a heavy sack of sand with one hand, um, similar to a clean and jerk lift uh, in modern day, and keep it in a quasi-vertical position. That means overhead but slightly in front. This lift would be performed with various weights and would have various times set that you would have to hold the sand above your head for it to count, Um, similar to many powerlifting and strongman events you see in uh, in modern times. Now, training in sports like this in Egypt could be seen as far back as 3000 BC, but I would say that they really uh, became popular or, or widely practiced around 1500 BC. Unfortunately, I don't have a whole bunch of information on the ancient Egyptians as far as their weightlifting goes. I am going to do a deeper dive on that later, but um, from there we are going to go to the Romans, Greeks, and ancient Chinese. The reason I'm clumping all three of those together is it's real strange. Right around the same time, um, I would say from the 1500 BC mark forward um, is when they really got super involved into the whole weightlifting, coaching, training, and lifting for sport, basically. First off, we have the Greeks and Romans, um, both of which they're very closely related as far as most weightlifting and sports goes. They did have different views when it came to the Olympics later down the line, but we'll get into that at a different time. The Greek word hymnos, spelled G-Y-M-N-O-S, is actually where we source the name gymnasium and is now shortened gym in modern culture. Um, Hymnos meant naked um, because they would (laughs) perform most of their exercises naked, um, that wrestling, uh, you name it. The Greek gymnasium, hymnos, um, functioned as a training facility for competitors in public games. So this is before the official Olympics. Um, it was also a place where they would socialize and engage in intellectual pursuits. And basically what that means is just have conversations about philosophy, um, economy, you know, you name it. Uh, only adult male citizens were allowed to use, um, the hymnos or hymna- hymnasia. Um, they normally practice and competed nude as stated before, before, in order to encourage the aesthetic appreciation of the male body and to be a tribute to the gods. Um, they saw personal training as not only recreational, but also something that you were doing as almost like a thank you to their gods. Um, basically, I was given this body, the the human form is so beautiful, and I want to maximize the potential for the, for it. Meanwhile, in ancient China, um, they would practice 
lifting something called a ding, D-I-N-G, which is could be a square or circular cauldron. Um, these were normally made out of uh, ceramics, or the fancier ones were made out of cast bronze. Um, the, I guess, more intricate, fancier, and heavier that the ding was, the greater the social status of the person that either owned it or was able to lift it. Um, these were normally, I mean, the square and the square ones were four legged. The circular ones were three legged. Most were circular or um, traditional cauldron shape, I, I guess, and were three legged. Um, now, as I guess a recreational thing to do, but also to show your strength to society, people would be, would challenge themselves and others to lifting these dings. Um, these would range anywhere from, uh, 50 and a hundred pounds to the largest one that I could find, um, research on was 1,836 pounds, which is also 832, a little bit over 832 kilograms. Um, now I have seen depictions of two different lifting styles. Um, one being more similar to the current Atlas stone lifting, um, squatting down, bear hugging the cauldron and, uh, standing up with it. Um, and then I've, I've also seen depictions of men grabbing two of the three legs and lifting it primarily with arm strength uh, above their head. Now, these lifts would um, become more and more sophisticated over time. Um, The intricacies of the dings would, would differ greater competitions would be held by the time it came to the Han dynasty, which is 206 BC to 220 AD. Um, actual official competitions were being held, uh, lifting competitions where, um, people would be bestowed honors if they could, you know, f- complete the, the competitions or, or win the event. Not only did the Chinese have the ding lifting, but there are many other lifts that they would compete in that is almost kind of their form of the Olympics and would, would honestly be very interesting to watch. Now these lifts um, are around the time of the silk road and would include, but aren't limited to um, showing their broadsword performance, barbell stone lifting, various different types of weight carrying, and weighted acrobatic performances. This can be anything from a crude version of a kettlebell, which is uh, basically a stone, looks almost like a purse made of made of stone um, that you would lift, or carrying whole tables with plates on them to like cross uneasy walkways. Basically showing your your balance and precision, fine motor skills, and and stabilization. Now, in 776 BC uh, was the first known Olympics, and it was held in the summer at Olympia, which is the site in southern Greece where many people would go to worship their gods. The Olympics were actually created in or in honor of ancient Greece's most famous god Zeus and was meant to not only show the people it it basically had the the same thought concepts behind hymnos or the hym, hymnasia um it was meant to show the people how amazing the human body could be what it was capable of, um, and to give thanks to the gods for providing life. Um, the Olympics included many things, um, sprinting, wrestling, which are still part of the modern games. Um, 
and they used to have they used to have chariot racing and something called pancration. Pancration was a f- like fighting sport, very similar to the early days of UFC. Um, there were no weight classes, no time limits, and there was only two rules: you could not bite, and there was no eye gouging. Competitors would fight until one of them gave up or died. Another interesting thing that they would do is um, the hoplite event, which is basically a race where the runners would wear full armor and shields. So the first ever Greek Olympics was held in the city state of Elis in 776 BC. Um, The Olympics had already been being performed or executed for the past 500 years at that time, just on a local level. Um, So this was the first official one that was international. They would have, at the time, as many as 100 cities from throughout the Greek empire visit Ellis to see the Olympics. Like I said, there was foot races, there was chariot races, military competitions, boxing, wrestling, Um, And then they also had the pentathlon, which was introduced almost 70 years later at 708 BC, which consisted of a foot race, the long jump, discus, javelin throws, and wrestling. In 393 AD, so almost 1100 years later, um, the Roman emperor Theodosius... He abolished the games in order to suppress paganism within his empire, the Roman Empire. All right, and then we flash forward to 1896 AD. um, So it's uh, April 6th, 1896, uh, which was about 1,500 years after they had been banned by the Roman Emperor Theodosius I. That was when the first modern day Olympic games was. So yeah, at the opening of the Athens games, King Georgios, the first of Greece and a crowd of 60,000 spectators welcomed athletes from 13 nations to the international competition. So this was a big deal because it'd been 1500 years uh, with no Olympic games. And now so many more nations and spectators are able to participate and watch. Yeah, and there's a sneak peek into how modern-day weightlifting and personal training got its start. Um, Personal trainers and coaches weren't really a thing until the Olympics, really. And it's just crazy to see the, the evolution. I'm going to be going deeper into each specific civilization later on, as well as um, doing an episode specifically over implements used. Um, Everything from atlas stones to um, the maces that are used in India, you name it. We're going to go do a deep dive, a longer episode on all of that. If you liked what you heard, feel free to rate and review. Like I said, you can follow the podcast at Way of Life Podcast. There's going to be, once the merch is live, there will be a merch link in the description below, as well as our YouTube, the hotline, which you can call and request something to be covered in an episode or or really do, you know, ask any type of question. I really appreciate the support and I will be talking to y'all next week. Bye.